So, I mean, how was that genocide? How was it, and how was it, how was it, or how was it not racism? Yeah, nah, that's, that's, <clears throat> again, racism goes back to being in power and having a system that can oppress you, period. And since black folk are not mm -hmm. in that, we can't <clears throat> be racist. Taking it to Uganda or something like that, right? <clears throat> you have what you would call black folk in power and writing laws and doing genocide. But it wouldn't be racism as far as what racism is. It is a bunch of other bad stuff. <clears throat> Stupid ethnic cleansing, uh, euthanasia, got plenty of words for that, right? And it's stupid, and so it's highly oppressive. But it's just a problem with one ethnic group <clears throat> having a problem with another ethnic group. And that's the actual problem. It wouldn't be racism, though, <clears throat> if we define what racism is. Now, you can use, you can say, well, all people were slaves. You'd be correct. You would be absolutely correct. I had, I had a white guy tell me, white guy told me, I think the best form of slavery ever alive was what the Egyptians did. Ah, oh, <laughs> oh, he's trying to hit me. Okay, so for, oh, now we admit the Egyptians was black. That's what you're trying to do. Okay, <laughs> see, you, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay, you're right. So now, now you want to hit me with, oh, now Egyptians is black when you want to hit this argument. <laughs> Got it, no problem. Got that. So let's hit you with this here. I said, and I said, no problem. And I hit him with, that was a great form of slavery. But even those slaves got to be set free. No different than biblical slavery or <clears throat> antiquity slavery, the whole Roman period, Egyptian slavery. These people after seven years or whatever, they can buy their freedom, fight for their freedom. As a gladiator, whatever they had to do, they can get their freedom. You, white folk, that it was nothing to do with. Slave, American slavery, American racism is something that the world's never seen before. That's not the same thing. <clears throat> so if you're going to define racism as oppression of people, you're more than welcome to say that. That that, that would be genocide, Africans towards, etc. right? No problem. But when you talk about what we call racism today, we're going back to American slavery. That's whole, that's completely different. And it was the founding stuff. Oh, man, I just realized I'm in Maryland. Y'all started racism. The founding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the doctrine of exclusion. <laughs> Have it right in Maryland. I just thought about that. That's crazy. The doctrine of exclusion said, okay, as white folk, all black folk are excluded from the fruit of white folk. Period. And there's a little clause in there. And if you try, if if my try as a white woman, you're not. As a white woman, if she tries to, it, what's your name? A cherry. A, ch a cherry, that's right. If white folk, if you tried as a white woman to include a cherry into your fruit, and he's black, then you get treated like a black person now. This is why it's so hard to have white allies. Yeah, what, what's, what's, uh, Paul Mooney says, <laughs> everybody want to be a nigga, nobody want to be a nigga, right? <laughs> you gotta see Dave Chappelle, that's what he says. Everybody wanna, everybody wanna be black, but don't wanna be treated like they black, right? Mm -hmm. And the doctrine of exclusion happened right here, the East Coast, said, y'all can't have nothing that we got. And that was the founding stone of racism. It's like 1611. You can look it up. Doctrine of Exclusion, it is Googleable. You can look it up. It's like 1611, right here in Maryland. Well, I believe it's in Maryland. And then that started what we call racism. And it was getting ready to be the total badness of slavery. And right after that came the slave codes. Slave code says, all right, then, we got this. We got this Doctrine of Exclusion. They already can't be us. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to multiply. We're going to 10x that. Grant Cardone. We're going to 10x with the slave codes, with the doctrine of exclusion codes. Now we got, now they really could get punished for even trying to be us. Then here's what happens. It's always about money. 
you know how you watch a movie, it was always about a woman. <laughs> and Transformers <laughs> has something to do with a girl, right? It doesn't matter what the movie is. It's some love interest right there. It's all about the money in the real world, right? <clears throat> now you get these, and I'm going to just call it what it is. You get these people that came to what we now call America. You get these people to start over. They couldn't, with due respect, they couldn't make it in England. So they start anew over here. Land was free. Land was free. They gave out land like like we give out skittles. You know what I'm saying? You like you want some chips? You want to get one chip? Get you a handful of chips. They gave out a handful of land as much as they could. Then they was like, well look, y'all need a labor force. We ain't got one. Yeah you do. Remember those people you excluded? Those people? Yeah. Use them. And that was the whole start of slavery. A labor force. Nah. That's important because slavery has always been about, and this is why racism is, this is why I tell you, you can't be racist. Because slavery has always been about free labor. Please know that the people who own slaves, their hardest job was to wake you up and say, boy, get out there in that field. After that, they drank tea and put on their nice clothes, because you were the labor force, all right? Now, the reason why racism is so important, because you got your labor force, but that's what it was all about. So how do you flip it to have, labor, have slavery now? Because it's here, it's here. Slavery is about free labor. Don't ever forget that, because that's what the prison system is. Go to jail. What? Go to jail. Be a slave. Clean the streets. Clean the streets. Build this Clean bridge. bridge. Clean this bridge. land. So free labor. But, but they so slick. You fast Capitalism so slick. That's a, see that's that's why they put mostly black people in prison. Now they don't even care. Now white folks are slaves. They don't even know it. Called debt slavery. What used to happen under the feudal system, the lord of the land would come, <clears throat> say. All right, AK, for exchange for your freedom, I will protect you. You will give me from the land, and I will then protect you with my military might. You say, cool, no problem. I'm tired of my, my crops getting you know, plundered anyway. No problem. It's a feudalism system. Then we flip that. Now we got something else. When some American slavery happened, we say, yo, you're going to work for me for free, period. Like, for real, like, real, real. You know when black folks say it, say it twice. Like, for real, for real? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, real, real free. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you in my house. And I'm not going to live there, but it's my house. And then, since you get hungry, I'm going to feed you too, though. It's the least I can do. So I'm going to feed you, and I'm going to house you. I won't do that no more. Dead slavery says, now, nah, now, nah, you go feed yourself. You go house yourself, but as long as you're in debt, I own you. Now that's white folk. Dead slavery. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Man. One more question. I was going to say, so before you came, we were kind of talking about the question that he asked. But one thing interesting about you to me is that um, typically when our people reach this platform or other status, they wear Mr. Charlie's suits and his shoes, and they think they're Mr. Charlie. And not only, yeah. not only do they think they're Mr. Charlie, they think they're white supremacists at that, so they must suppress their people and their mind. And it's a lot of how do you stay grounded? Yeah, I remember I'm black. <laughs> right? I stay grounded because I remember I'm black. That, 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 that's the real answer. It, it, I'm, what, you got two things working here. The second one gives me the most power out of anything, anybody, period, okay? The first thing is I just remember that I am black and I have a responsibility to take care of black people. I just remember that. And it's not too hard to remember when it's something you think about every day. I buy black. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I can't wait to buy the next black whatever. I, I can't wait. I, I, I love black women. 
of all shades. You understand what I'm saying? I like Oprah with her black self. Bernie Mac, rest in peace with his black self. You just get, name somebody, I'm with him. Especially, I heard somebody say on social media, no, we're on social media, on red carpet. Who are you rooting for for the Grammys? Anybody black, right? That's, that, that's why I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Lisa Ray. Yeah, that's Lisa Ray, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was real talk, though, right? Like, anybody black, I got it. I'm rooting for everybody black. Man, that was real talk. The second thing that keeps me understanding is something. I get that I'm the most powerful person in the room when I walk in the room. And it sounds arrogant, but it's not. At six, I was homeless. Seven, eight, nine, I was being molested, raped, and beat up because I'm homeless. I was a homeless kid, right? So now, just to get to nine, I'm starving, I'm being sexually abused, I'm homeless, and ain't nobody doing nothing about it. You feel me? Ain't nobody getting arrested. I got to look at my sexual abuser and hope I get strong enough to fight them off. That's at nine. Then, I got to somehow put myself through school. I drop out of school. I fell the fifth grade. I fell the sixth grade. All that terrible stuff. I got to deal with the police now. I'm a statistic. All that stuff like that. Then, I get older. I go to the Army. There's oppression there. I'm going to go. Just go. So, when I go talk to Phil in some desk, Phil didn't have to do what I had to do to sit at this damn desk. So when I'm going to walk in the room, I understand that I'm walking in the room with my ancestors mm -hmm. and all the stuff that happened to me. So to sit at this mediocre table that you call something great, dude, all you had to do was just walk in. You know, you didn't have to write because when the police found you smoking weed at 17, they gave you a warning. Mm -hmm. They give us felonies. You understand what I'm saying? You didn't have to do nothing. Me, I had to go to hell just to sit at this table. So it's easy for me not to become Mr. Charlie and become a supremacist because I get, in order for me to get here, I had to get raped to get here. You know what I'm saying? I had to be homeless to get here. It's crazy. And when you keep that in mind, the only reason to ever become Mr. Charlie is because you want to be involved to get their benefits. I don't need that. When you get... As high as I've gotten, they involve you to dissolve you. Mm. See, I talk too much about Black Rise. You know what I'm saying? And I'm mm. ver and I have don't get it, and I have a majority white audience too. I have I'm like the Dave Chappelle of motivational speaker. Right? I have a majority white audience, and they know I'm as pro black as black can get. I am. It just is what it is. And what's crazy about that is I don't need to be involved in your little country club. So I can get some stuff I want now. I just go buy it. Hmm. When you got your own economy, you refuse to change. Period. Point blank. Hmm. I don't. Whoever the president is, I got nothing to do with me. Nothing. Obama or Trump ain't never sat and ate my grandmother's sweet potato pie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, is, this ain't never happened. It just, it just ain't. Now you know one of them might be cool enough to do so, but you know what I'm saying. But it just, it just, it just ain't never happened, man. When you got your own economy. Put on your suit for what? I had a seamstress, black, preferably. Make my suit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm looking for I am look I'm looking for a black seamstress or someone to make my tailor made suits. I ain't found one yet. Or maybe I have, I don't know. Artillery needs. Mm -hmm. Alright then, see, there we go. Thank you hear tailoring needs. <laughs> In Texas, just Google. What did you say? Tellery Neats. Yeah, Tellery Neats. We have Tellery Neats. Tellery Neats, yeah. Gotcha. It's a uh, uh, girl, what's her name? Uh, Rashida. Rashida. Rashida, yeah. We nice. have a podcast two summers ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah she got his website where, um, let's say if you, you're based in Texas, you just go on there, you type in your city and state, and it's going to pull up all the neighborhood, um, all the tailors who are subscribed to her platform. Nice. Yeah, so I guess you got to see that photos on there too. Mm -hmm. You can see who that person is. You know, I'm glad you said that when you say you got photos on it. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. It's like Yelp for it. Which is dope. Mm -hmm. But I don't really need to see proof of your work to buy black. Nice. That's where I differ. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why if it didn't work out for me, you know what? It just ain't work out. I just, if I can work with you, I say, you know, this ain't work out. 
I just won't buy from you again. Not out of oppression. It's just you just wasn't for the perception I needed it to be. I'll go somewhere else. You know, I, I just not your cup of tea. You know what I'm saying? But I don't need proof. Because the point is to buy black. The point is not to qualify buying black. Because I don't do that to white folk. <laughs> you know, real talk. Yeah. I didn't go Amazon. Mm -hmm. All right, then is there is Amazon have competition? Let me, <laughs> let me. Right, I didn't do that. I said, oh, Amazon, that's hot. Let me go to Amazon. In, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't. I, so why do that to black folk? Right. I don't look for Starbucks competition. I don't even know if they got competition. I just had Starbucks this morning, which is not black. But you know what? At least they're white of a black ally. <laughs> and. Yeah, but at least they try to. They get hit every time they try to be a black ally. Every time they try. Every time they try, they get hit. The stock go down. <laughs> every time they do it. Every single time they do it. But I don't qualify. I don't even see pictures. I mean, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But man, black is black. And we, I ain't got time to be stuck in the middle of the podcast. Oh, let me check their ratings. And they, man, I'm on the way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's what was different. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it, man. I'm going. Yeah, I, I need to watch that. I love Killer Mike. Yeah. God, he 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 said something so real a couple of years ago. The folks still ain't like, here. It's, it's worth repeating. He was like, talking about the revolution. But if you ain't planting no gardens, you're not ready for the revolution. Because the first time they hit, first, a couple of things, a revolutionary rarely survives the revolution he or she started. So be ready for that, number one. Cause they probably gonna kill you. Number two, the first thing you do in warfare is you cut off the food supply. So if you ain't got your own food, you can't be ready for war. Mm. We don't think like that though. Like we need our own grocery stores and we need to get our veggie produce from the back garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? And if we can't do that, we ain't ready for war. That's why, that's why I when, like, when we take it back to like the whole Amber and Republic thing in Cameroon, I'm like, dog, you don't have your own airport. You don't have your own military. Um, you don't have military. You don't have, you, don't have you don't have nothing. But then you want to be your own country? Hmm. Like, come on, man. Who here is not? Like, who, who, like, who is not thinking? Hmm. Hmm. Facts, man. But then y'all just want us to what? Donate. Donate. Donate to, to, what? to, to what? Boy, you about to get me started on that. <laughs> that donate. Let me, let me, mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna try to change my tone because I've been intense the whole time. No, no, I'm trying, keep, I'm keep trying to come up. Well, we, we, as black folk, we gotta stop asking for donations when we don't donate to others. We gotta stop doing that, man. It, we, nice. God, we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man. Coming stuck in the middle of the podcast is going down. You know what I'm saying? It's good, good, cool. And then I don't share your status. And I'm like, hey bro, I just started a podcast, man. You ought to be on. So now oh, so now you want me to, you want me to cipher from your audience now. Like you want my audience so I could be on your show, so I could bring my people to you. But I actually to retweet something, you ain't even wanna do that. But you know what? Donate though. It's cool. It's cool. Nah, man. We gotta stop that. <laughs> We, we gotta stop that. We we gotta that that's the group economics, man. We just most of our problems can be solved from group economics. It's 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 been around since I mean it doesn't I was gonna say biblical time, but before that, man, when, when they was calling this place, well they wouldn't call it, but the time in which we call Mesopotamia, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't call it that, you know what I'm saying? But the historians today do. Man, when it was people was living between two rivers and the known world was Egypt. Man, they was doing group, group economics, man. You know, we we got to get back to that. Hmm. We got to get back to it. Yeah, we got to. I got to look around here. Y'all doing, it's, it's a lot of great stuff up in here. It should be when you say, oh, man, I appreciate you plugging my, I should say stuck in the middle as much as I get. Mm -hmm. I should post. I just left stuck in the middle. You know, you know what I'm saying? I should, man. I just, well, that's what I'm trying to emphasize in this podcast, man. I mean, man. man. Like if anything, in fact, I got. In fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, I'm gonna. You know what? I ain't. I was. I'm. I'm gonna prove my own talk. 
So I got five podcasts that usually top rank. And what I'm doing is I just start monetizing, right? And, and I've got, and not even much, I want to keep everything low. So I got, got these big companies paying $65 for uh, mid-rolls, one-minute mid-rolls, et cetera, right? Stuff like that. Y'all sending me a 30-second, give me a 30-second whatever, right? Give me a 30-second audio commercial view. Mm -hmm. You promise to, we bought it in trade. This is what we do. I'm going to put you on one of these podcasts, every episode, no matter what. Feel me? Like, no matter what. See a status shared. Tell somebody about me. We call it even. It's not like I'm going to jump in the radio frequency world, hold your 30 second audio together, and then push out each letter. You know what I'm saying? Just so I'm not doing the work. Logic Pro is going to do the work. You for to do all the work, record it, and then group economics. Now, I put my money where my mouth at. Send it to me, I'll get it done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's group economics, man. You do that, and then you show your audience me. Yep. We call it even. That's what we should be, all right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's something like what we're doing with Chico. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, there's plenty of my audience need to know about y'all. Cause I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna be satisfied. To my marketing budget is one million dollars a month. I'm not gonna be satisfied. It's not there. And every day it's not there. I get mad. Right? Like it's, it's not there. It's, it's 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 nice though. It's nice. It's nice. It's a nice marketing budget. The, the marketing budget. It's, it's about. It's about a it's about a forty unit apartment complex, mm-hmm. giving you money every month. You know what I'm saying? It's just maybe 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 sixty units. It's mm-hmm. a nice. It's a nice marketing budget. But it ain't a million. And it, it ain't. It's not currently over ten thousand. But why a million though? No reason. It's just some arbitrary number I pick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It got no no science behind it. I just, mm-hmm. I just. But you know, it should be a million, right? It's, it's, yeah. It, I, I wish I had a fly as a I ain't mm-hmm. got one. That's a million. But I ain't gonna stop there either. I'm just not gonna go. I right, I did something. Yeah. Like, there's no celebration moment yeah. till it's a million dollars a month. Mm-hmm. You know, like real talk, man. You, we need to be going for omni presence. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm curious. You were going to mention uh, a figure while we are recording, but you kind of held back. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Which, hold on, which one was it? Oh, what was that? Uh, show a dig. You was asking some good questions. What was it? Oh, man. Was it about the, the, the university thing? Oh, right, right. About taking over the higher education. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Was I, was I, was I going to show you I was gonna show you a figure or I was going to say something? No, you were going to say a figure. I was gonna say the figure. Yeah. I yeah, true. Oh, it was a business university. That's what it was. Right. I the this is what I did. I I I'll even give you the, the Rick Carey one because that's what it's called. That's what it's called. So I revolutionized tech. I'm actually starting a Division One university right now. I'm not bo- I'm, <laughs> I'm not playing, and they charging me out the ass. I'm dead serious. Like they are literally charging me a lot of. It's like fifteen thousand dollars just for the accreditation people to show up. Then I gotta pay for their travel and all that stuff. And I've been doing it for three years now. And then they hit me. They 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 so slick, man. They hit me with stop charging. Stop charging. Or you're gonna lose your accreditation. Cool, I stop charging, right? You know, cause but I'm smart with it though. So now I'm like, but when we get the accreditation, I can back back degree these people, right? Cool. Giving out psychology degrees. A bachelor's in psychology, theology, because I'm in the Bible Belt, and business. Okay, I forget which concentration of business was business. Three of those, and of course, each one of those cost money. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, that's, and I ran the money, because it cost money. I ran the money. I was like, God, all right, what did I do? That's how the ATS company got started. Instead of me going to get a loan, I said, all right, what low hanging fruit can I do to make money over here? So I started a company. To fund that company, right? It's the only way I think, right? It's have no debt that other people are not paying for, right? That's the deal. So I started ATS company, 
and I start solving two problems at one time. <clears throat> the Division I college is going to cost less than, let me see, if you do, if you do the, if you pay for a full year of college, give me, get, get a, you got your calculator? Do what was, was full time, that's 12 hours, right? So that's four classes. That's what, what that's, yes, that's the way it could be. You know, no, four classes, four, three hour classes, mm -hmm. four classes, and then that's four. No, so I, I, I can do the math in my head now. It's going to cost less than $300 to pay for a full semester. What? Less than $300. Division one degree. Wow. Just got a trademark, that's why I'm saying something right now. Okay. So when I told y'all revolutionize how education work, that's what I was talking about. Is yeah. it gonna be in Texas? <laughs> it is gonna be in Texas. And I'm going to too much information right now. <laughs> 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 it is gonna be in Texas. I can't say that. It's gonna be in Texas. And, and right and so but yeah, yeah, so that's that's one of the things I was gonna say and I was like, nah, let me not say that on that, let me not say that on that. So to be completely candid with you, I don't know if I should be like elated or scared. Because like <laughs> No, because like you are everything that every young black man needs to see. Because you're doing it. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I push the boundaries too. Okay. So I'm listening yeah, to you and yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. Man, man, guys. But then guys like you and us traditionally, we usually end up gone before our time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why I said I'm elated and I'm scared yeah, at the same, same time. time. How same did you time. get to this point Man. without anybody kind of? The Millionaire Next Door. Y'all ever read that book? No. You absolutely should. It's, it absolutely should. It. I've learned how to be the Millionaire Next Door. People. Ah man, he ain't nobody. Good. That's exactly, <laughs> exactly. what I need you to think. Right. Because real power is felt, not seen. See, mm -hmm. I learned that from the hood. Right. Drugs again, right? right? I learned that from drugs. If you see my power, then that gives me the fame and stuff. But if you feel my power and, and, and I get away with it, mm -hmm. well, you got to die. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Real power is felt, not seen. The person that's really in power is the dude that you can't see, but you feel. That power. Perfect example. Are you a boxing fan? Yes. Who's the most influential person in boxing? Most influential person in boxing. Mm -hmm. That would be Muhammad, how I live. You let everyone else tell it. Well, influential businessman in boxing. Oh, oh shit. Floyd Mayweather. No, it's the guy behind the scenes. There you go. Oh, oh, him. The guy with the glasses. Oh, yeah, the glasses. That's I'll see. I heard his name. I'll I'll him. Him. I'll I'll him. Him. Yeah. There you go. See what I'm saying? See? Exactly. It's perfect example. Exactly. Perfect example. Perfect yeah, example. Yeah, Well, when you think about. Just, when you think about John Maxwell Company, mm -hmm. there's a guy behind the scenes. He just got awarded like, one of the top coach, number one coach in the world, like two days ago. His name was Paul Martinelli. Yeah. You, you ever heard of him? Yeah, David. He, he's, he is the genius behind the John Maxwell brand. That's not to take anything away from John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. He's cause John Maxwell is the standard of coaching. Excuse me. Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is, is the standard, standard of coaching. Mm, okay. Period. He invented coaching. John Maxwell is the standard of duplicating coaches, mm. is what I meant to say. But you're right. Tony Robbins is yeah. the standard of coaching, period, point blank. That nobody does it better than Tony Robbins. And no. right, it's just, that's just facts, man. That's just facts. And then he invented coaching. Nobody would be coaching. It was for him. He invented the word coaching like, in the way we use it. He did. I, I actually went to one of his shows last year. Man. It's, um, it's different. It's, you yeah. it's just different. Yeah. Yeah. Would you would you go to UPW at the uh, university? That's yeah, at least the power within, right? Yeah, yeah. Not the power university. Within. No, not, not I think the university. They visited at GW. Yeah, it was it was it mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three day weekend event. No, oh, it, was, it, was it, was just, it was just one. Oh. I, I, I can't I can't afford that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna say because he yeah. he only do yeah. long stuff because he right. he takes you yeah, right. through the man the journey. man. That's his thing. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. he he's not going. He's not playing. You know, he, I, last I heard, and I know it ain't this no more, but the last I heard, because, because I'm in the circle, right? right? The last I heard, he was charging $5 million to coach one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and he's booked up for like a years. Number, ridiculous number of years. And he's coaching government leaders right mm -hmm. and billionaires like you know what i'm saying right. five million dollars to book him for a year right. or something like that whatever and i said what <laughs> <laughs> five 
five million dollars, man. We didn't even get to the part about you being a pastor. <laughs> yeah, church I'm like, on church. I like the what worst is pastor on planet Earth. What is? Man. How did you come up with that name? What is it really? Because remember, since I was adopted, well, since I grew up homeless, I do. I don't. I don't did get adopted at fourteen. I never knew church, right? For me, God is this adopting father saying, "Hey, AK, come in." You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, right? And so when I got into the church league, I didn't really. I'm not really comfortable around a bunch of Christians. Mm. I can't relate. Mm. I can't. So, you know, show me drug dealers, <laughs> winos, you know, OG, triple OG. I'm real comfortable over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do is go get folk that were not connected to the church. That's what the church function is. And we've been doing that. I've been doing that since 2012. Everybody talking about unchurched now. They weren't doing it in 2012, right? They weren't doing it in 2012. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm getting ready to retire. I'm actually, I'm actually passing the church along now. Mm -hmm. I've done my I've done my seven years. I'm, I'm done. I got mm -hmm. got somebody with me that's that's doing a fantastic job. So mm -hmm. I've been training him. He just just preached yesterday. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm the worst pastor in the world, man. Mm -hmm. Because that whole shepherd thing, I don't do that. I'm like Paul. You know, I'm coming through, kicking down stuff, saying mm -hmm. this is wrong, mm -hmm. fix this up. But 98 percent of my church are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And okay. yeah, it didn't. That wasn't. Didn't start that way. Right. I'll coach them too. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's that's dope. Yeah, yeah. Got the own economies, and about ninety percent of those work for me, while having their own company. So they don't. The way I got it set up is you don't work for me. You partner your business with me, oh, and I man. build around your business. I need to talk to you. <laughs> You're doing too many things right. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I just don't believe in employees. Right. Now, if that's your dream, your dream job, then you're fine. If you're not complaining, I'm really not. I am not for the audience of people who are not complaining. That's not my audience. Right. You have to. Now, my audience now is a bunch of high performers. They're not complaining, but they're not satisfied with something. You feel me? But if you not if you love where you at, I'm not your I'm not sure. You just have a mutual respect for me, like man, hey, go, go go talk to this guy, stuff like that. But if you complaining, I'm your guy. Yeah, and I always put myself out of business and start something, cause I always know, I, I like I know AK is hungry. You know what I'm saying? And I know if I leave low hanging fruit, he gonna pick it. Now, I'm always looking for a cat like you though. You feel what I'm saying? Like, and I got it from Jay-Z. I'm listening to Jay-Z. Jay-Z is actually one of my role models, man. I love Jay-Z. Made a few Jay-Z references. Yeah, man. I have said, yeah, 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 yeah. I love Jay-Z. And he was saying one day, man, I know it's a cat right now beating on his desk, writing rhymes, eating his cereal. And he coming for me. I'm going to find him and I'm going to hire him, right? And I thought that was so dope that his mindset, because I thought he was going to fight on battle and all that stuff. I thought he was going to hire him. Now what I do, I don't, I don't I really like hiring. I like to empower what can we, how can we work together to get all this money? That's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like, everybody who work, everybody in my inner core has their own business. And they're all tied into the ATS company. And then my company is tied into theirs too. And we share. That's, that, this book, everybody eats. this is honest, honest to God truth. This, this book, which is now AK's. <laughs> Which has been signed. <laughs> this book, I got an inner core of six people. Without them, I wouldn't be famous. I wouldn't be nothing. I, I wouldn't. I would just be. First off, man, you gotta you gotta respect your first follower. Right? In this case, Tempest Smith was one of my first small followers. She's my assistant. She started out my secretary, got promoted a few times. Now she's my business partner. Period. Point blank. She's an incredible business mind. And she's incredible. My book. All those proceeds don't go to me. Like I, it's not even a, it's not even a public fact. I think I probably need to make it public. I'm splitting the revenue of that book with my entire core that got me here. Wow! I promised them that. The slash, uh, yeah, I promised them about a year and a half ago. But it was a journey for the for the book, 501 pages. That obviously a journey, right? It's a journey, but that book, every time you buy it, you 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 doing something to the economy. 
I've never done anything like that before. It's not mine. It's theirs. I don't even know what to tell you. You know, before before you started that book, I was behind the scenes too. If you forgot. <laughs> 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 Send me that 30 second commercial for real, real time. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll put Wait, you did, on. The reflex um, get your email? Should have. If right, not, right, I'll, right, I'll, I'll right, text it. Right, right, right here. All right. <laughs> 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 I'll just pass